Hey everyone, it's the beginning of the long Seollal, or Lunar New Year weekend, and almost everything in Seoul is closed. It'll also be some of the coldest days Seoul has had this winter, so a perfect time to visit my family and visit a few places by car. First, I grab some breakfast goodies from the only place open, the reliable convenience store. I love the crispy seaweed wrapper from a properly packaged samgak kimbap or onigiri. This one had a spicy kimchi fried rice filling. Not bad. And I also love black soy milk, especially because the convenience stores keep them heated at all times. So soothing. After my aunt picked me up with her daughter, we drove back to her place where she cooked me takbokumtang, a spicy braised chicken dish. Her love language is definitely cooking delicious food for her loved ones. And what a delicious first meal together. Spicy, but she always gets the balance of the flavors perfect. We almost lost ourselves in a food coma for the rest of the night, but we rallied and headed out to Majang Lake. I think it was only a quick hour ride by car, thanks to the empty roads during the holiday weekend. We were surprised to see the lake nearly frozen over with snow completely blanketing the surface. It was such a gorgeous day with the sun out and we were able to enjoy pristine views of the snowy lake as we walked to the main attraction, the suspension bridge over the width of the lake. I couldn't help but feel a bit emotional as I made my way across. Like maybe some of you, I had just experienced one of the harshest winters of my life, metaphorically. And though it isn't fully over, I survived the first part and even managed to find gratefulness throughout the process. Crossing this bridge felt like a combination of many things in my life coming to an end and walking towards new possibilities. For dinner, my aunt made me my favorite pibin naengmyeon, spicy cold noodles, with marinated beef on the side. For dessert, we ate the strawberries I bought at a market that was pricey but more delicious than any other strawberry I can get in the States. The next day was officially Seollal, Lunar New Year. My aunt drove us to my grandma's house where my mom's side of the family gathers together every year in Korea. Everyone is in charge of different traditional dishes that make this day special. More and more, Koreans are now opting for ready-made dishes to avoid the stress and burden of cooking laboriously during their well-earned time off from work. My family decided to buy the mandu or Korean dumplings for the tteokguk or rice cake soup this year because that is one of the more time-intensive dishes to make. We stuffed our faces silly and somehow managed to stand up to begin sebe. Sebe is the act of bowing to your elders as a sign of respect while wishing them lots of luck in the new year. In turn, you are given words of wisdom or well wishes and gifted money in an envelope. Nowadays, people rarely wear hanbok or traditional clothing, so my cousin was the only one wearing one. We first bow to my grandma as she is the first elder of the family. She has dementia and has trouble remembering our names, but I was so grateful to get a chance to sebe to her as I don't know when I will be back. 
Then we went down the line and bowed to our aunts and uncles. I felt weird about accepting money at this age. But watching my younger cousin get so giddy and excited filled us with laughter. They're all so cute. Getting to spend some quality time with my grandma was a major reason for this trip. She had a big hand in raising my sister and me when we were young. When this photo was taken just six years ago, her mind was free from the effects of dementia and seemed much younger. I'm just so thankful I got a chance to see her again. We ended the night back at my aunt's place with mandu she had made because the store-bought one was so unsatisfying. The next day, my aunt took me to Chebudo, an island famous for grilled clams. You can only access this part of town when the tide fully goes out. Once it returns, the road across gets completely submerged. They recently built a cable car to showcase the bottom of the ocean. We bought a round-trip pass for the Crystal Cabin, which is slightly more expensive but gives you clear views from the bottom of the cable car. And it was definitely the way to go. It was so neat to see the bottom of the ocean from this vantage point. We got off on the other side to look around and goofed around on some wobble chairs. The view from this side was absolutely gorgeous, and we even saw a lone crane waiting in the water. By the way, a quick reminder to follow me on Instagram to see live stories while I'm traveling. Once we got back to the mainland, we sat down to eat grilled clams. It's basically just raw clams, scallops, mussels on a grill. No frills, but it's such a treat. Let's face it, that was the real reason I wanted to come out here. I was a bit disappointed that this place didn't have coals, as that is the standard. So if you ever come out here, choose your restaurant wisely. There are tons. I still enjoyed every bit of it, including the delicious flounder sashimi that came with the set. Chewy, Koreans love chewy, and surprisingly almost buttery for some pieces. Of course, had to end the meal with pajira kalguksu or clam knife cut noodles. I could tell these noodles were freshly made. Then, as if that wasn't enough seafood, we ate some spicy octopus for dinner back at home to wrap out the night. The next day began at a Starbucks, not quite by choice, but because we needed to kill some time. But man, why is Starbucks so much better and cleaner in Korea? Hmm? Lunch was at this Hanu or Korean Wagyu restaurant in Mapogu but I don't remember the name. All I know is that it was quality and we got the most expensive Wagyu cuts on the menu, thanks to my uncle. Korean Wagyu is leaner and beefier than Japanese Wagyu. It's still very juicy, but not as fatty, so you can definitely eat a lot more of it. And yes, yes, it was very good. And of course, we ended the meal with cold broth noodles or mulengmyeon. Then we hung out at my uncle's place with a nice view of the Han River. Since it was supposed to be the coldest winter day so far, I convinced my cousin to go with me to the Monet Inside exhibit at Ground Seesaw, a perfect cold day activity. It's basically located inside the Lotte department store at Myeongdong. The first half of the experience includes the whole story of Monet told through his animated paintings, along with Japanese influences. I especially love that they included Hokusai's Great Wave off Kanagawa. Then you get to walk around freely to enjoy these animations again for the second half of your visit. It was beautifully executed and reminded me of the Klimt exhibit I had experienced in Paris years ago. Definitely worth the visit if you're in Seoul. Girl, why do all the 
good things have to fade with time And why do we always have to leave them behind Maybe all the tears that carved out these holes Are making room for joy when I'm finally home After the exhibit, my cousin and I braved the cold and strolled around the Myeongdong area looking for the perfect street snack to share. She had never tried taiyaki before, so we bought one with custard filling and it was so crispy and delicious. She approved. What a cutie. We ended our time in Myeongdong with some nail care before heading back to my aunt who had a giant chicken porridge waiting for us to help warm us up. Thank you for watching till the end. Subscribe and stay tuned for part 3 of the Korea vlog series coming soon.